welcome on a busy Tuesday afternoon. I'm Wendy Nix, Josina Anderson, Coach John Fox, Steve Young will join us shortly, and all 32 teams working. We've got you covered with our reporters around the country. Sal Powell is with the Eagles. Michelle Steele has the Bears covered. Mike Duraco with the Jaguars. Courtney Cronin in Minnesota. Jeff Darlington and Jeff Saturday are in Indianapolis with the Colts. And here's what Frank Reich had to say today. All right, Coach, I could ask you a lot of questions, like, you know, being a Super Bowl winning coach, all those things. But you know what everybody wants to know. Andrew Luck, how would you qualify his progression in the first week of camp? I think he's been really strong. I think he's came in here with the right mindset and, uh, and physically looks good and strong. And, and like our whole team and every player, really just fighting to get better every day. You have laid out a very clear plan for him, and it included this past week, a couple of days of practice and a little bit of rest. Yeah. How do you uh, anticipate that progressing through camp? You know, I think we'll stay consistent with that. Um, you know, it's, we're trying to keep a little bit of the rhythm of the season. And, uh, and so with the throw count and the whole deal, it's all planned out. I can't marry it perfectly um, because training camp is a little bit rhythm, but we did the best we could and feel good about it. And there they are, the intrepid Jeffs, Jeff Darlington, Jeff Saturday live from Indianapolis. Gentlemen. Wendy, Frank Reich might have some of the answers about the Indianapolis Colts. Jeff Saturday has all of the <laughs> answers. So now I'm going to ask him about Andrew Luck. What did you see out there? You had a pretty good up-close look. What did you feel about uh, about the way he was throwing the ball? Yeah, I was impressed. I mean, you know, I, I think I came with expectations from the injury uh, that it would look, this arm would look limited, you know, that you, you wouldn't see him. But it really, in my opinion, it had nothing to do with the injury. It wasn't ball speed or velocity or where he was putting the ball. It's learning the offense. I mean, he hadn't played in two years, and it's a brand-new offense and kind of what does that look like I think the timing that you saw or that I saw because I played in this offense just a little bit slow but had nothing to do again with the strength of the arm I I think about Peyton Manning wasn't like he had the strongest arm in the NFL but he knew the timing of the play and when to get get rid of the football I think those are the things he's learning when he had to put a ball in a spot he had plenty of velocity on it he looked good he's big I mean you can tell he put on weight he's he's definitely more muscular than I had seen him in the past and and people made comments about that other teammate so um he looked good, though, man. I was impressed. You know, Coach Reich, uh, I had talked to him, and, and he mentioned that he's going to keep him kind of a couple days on, maybe a day of rest here and there. What did you get the sense talking to Coach Reich about what he wants to see from Andrew as they progress? Yeah, I think owning the offense. You know, if, if this offense, you think about this, this is Peyton Manning's offense. Then, you know, Frank took it to, to um, you know, Phillip Rivers yeah. in San Diego, and then Carson Wentz in, in Philly. And so as you're looking at what this is, is as the quarterback has to own the offense, you're going to put him in the best play available, whether well, that's check to a run, you know, audible to a pass, whatever that looks like. But he has to be ready to know this is what I like. And you got to stick with it. It's not always going to be perfect, right. but make the most of it. I think that's what he, I think that's what Frank wants out of Andrew. And that's what will end up developing. Cause once you give him that, my goodness, man, the guy's got all the skills in the world. Did you, I, I, I sensed a really positive energy out here. And I mean, if you look across the league, this might be the team that wants to forget last year the most and move on to what feels like Absolutely. a better vibe. Like what was your sense on, sort of the vibe that exists out I, here. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you know, the energy and the effort that was getting put out was was unbelievable. I mean, you think this is this is day two of pads and guys are flying around and you're talking about a brand new offense and a brand new defense. You know, they're bringing back the 4-3 that, that Dungy basically ran right. here and, and you're not really built for it, right? I mean, these guys were built from a 3-4 and kind of a, you know, ground and pound type mentality but those guys were hustling and moving and you just saw energy everywhere and you saw competition and I think in my opinion, the competition is what's most most important. Can you get everybody on the same page and battling each other? That makes you a better football team. You had the uh, distinguished honor of breaking down the team. I thought that was really yeah. cool. Quickly, can you just kind of explain what you were able to say to those players out there after practice? Yeah, I just told me it, re- it reminded me of practices that we had. And again, Frank, you know, coming from, from the Tony Dungy tree and, and what they looked like, the energy, the effort, the excitement was all there. And I just told them the bottom line is, it's relationships. I mean, th- how you're going to become a great football team is you forge it now. I mean, it, it's it's eating together. It's training table. It's it's meetings. It's all these different times when you have moments when you can we, when you can do life together. That's what matters. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be in a dog fight in some game, and it's not going to be about scheme or play call. It's going to be can you trust the guy beside you? And ultimately, that what that's what made us a better football team than a lot of teams, and what separates good and great. And I hope those guys could get there. And I was pulling for them. Wendy Jeff did ESPN very proud out there. It was very very oh, cool Lord. to watch him break down the team. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Jeff and Jeff, thank you. Uh, Steve Young joins us now. And Steve, it's interesting. Look, Andrew is throwing at training camp and that is great news, no question. But 
you know, it's been almost two years since he's seen live game action. What's the biggest challenge between what he's doing now and doing that then? Well, Wendy, when you're when you're under control, right? Practice is under control. Everything he's doing is under control so that he doesn't put stress on that shallow shoulder socket and all the things around it that are going to have to prove that it can throw. He's got to be 95% plus to be back to be able to, you know, kind of rip the ball. When he starts to get in motion, fo- football really changes and the, and the platform where you throw from really changes. And all of a sudden, you're having to throw a little bit off balance. You have to rip it a little bit harder than you thought. You have to all of a sudden, in the middle of your motion, change. And that, in, in many ways, that puts a lot of pressure on that whole joint. And so that's the big question. If he's got that 95 plus, it doesn't have to be perfect again like it was before the surgery. But if it's close, he'll be fine. But if it's 85%, it's gonna. You cannot make up for that, Wendy, and that's why right now, great, let's see it in real action, and that's when he'll really know, too. He won't know until he gets into a game to make sure that it's all great. Steve, it makes so much sense, Coach, and you said that yesterday as well, that really that transition into the, you know, the chaos of a game is critical. How would you handle this right now in these, these few weeks that we have before that time? Well, I agree with Steve totally. I think right now, you know, everything's measured in practice. He wears a red jersey. All right? There's not a live rush on him. Now, it's going to be important, not just only for him physically, but mentally, all right, getting used to that in live action. So how they monitor that during the preseason, you know, is really going to be critical uh, taking care of him. Because let's be real, this team's way better football team with Andrew Luck than not. It's so true, Josina. And when you say two years, you know, the reality of how long it has been, to me anyway, really, really sets in. I mean, we're not talking about six months or an ACL. I mean, this has been a long layoff. Well, for me, actually, the operative word is trust is the first time he's really going to go out there, you know, get hurt by someone other than in a white and blue jersey and trust that, you know, everything is still going to be OK with the shoulder and, and he and, and he'll be all right. I just had like a, a partially torn meniscus, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And even I and I'm not an NFL quarterback like, ooh, can I get up the steps? So I can only imagine <laughs> in a National Football League game what he's going through mentally just to make sure that it's OK. And, and also anything that he's doing to retool it just to make sure that his arm is slotting in the right position and he's getting out and building that timing and that chemistry also with his receivers as well. All right, fair enough. Uh, We'll switch gears now to the Minnesota Vikings. It is good news, at least for receiver Stephon Diggs. The two sides, the Vikings and Diggs, have agreed to a five-year extension. It's worth $81 million and will keep Diggs in a Minnesota uniform for the next six seasons. That according to our Adam Schefter. The deal runs through the 2021 season and includes just more than $40 million in guaranteed money. And it is one more piece of the puzzle, Steve, for this Minnesota offense who put all their chips on the table when they acquired Kirk Cousins. Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, Kirk is a little different than a Case. I mean, Case is, a, is the ultimate artist in the red zone. You really see it. He's... he's uh, He's a little bit more of a swashbuckler, and I think it, the, the results show that in the red zone case is much better. And that's where Kirk kind of slows down because Kirk's much more of a scientist. He's like, he does his job very well. And a lot of times in the NFL, as you play quarterback, if you do your job in the red zone really well, you kick a field goal because you drop it down, the guy's not open, you just, and it's more of a, you know, you, you play it a little bit more safe. So Kirk's got to figure out a way to use these talented players around him in Minnesota to get that ball in the end zone. He's going to become have to become a little bit more of a swashbuckler, take some risks, do some things that are a little bit outside of his comfort zone. And I think that'll be important for Kirk to come in because I think Case did a great – I think they got used to that. I think they liked that swashbuckling that you saw at the end of a playoff game. You see the chance that chances they took and it pays off. Then Kirk's got to fill into those shoes a little bit. Well, let me ask you this then, Steve. Is this a case of apples and oranges, two different quarterbacks, or is this a clear upgrade with Kirk Cousins? It's a it's a subtle difference. I think that Kirk is he's a guy that again you know he's he's, the science part of it, which is a big part of the game. He is really really good, and I think the same thing at Washington. If Kirk's going to become an elite player, he's got to become more of an artist in the red zone and be a guy that can figure out a way to put it in there rather than just doing his job. And that to me, it's it's not really about upgrade or not upgrade. It's like Kirk, can you actually raise your game into that? top 10, top five level where you can, you have the science part. Now you got to get the art. Fair enough. And coach, you faced Kirk Cousins not so long ago. Yep. And so you saw exactly what he does and what he can do. 
Yeah, we played him in 15 and 16 when I was in Chicago, and I thought he had an excellent supporting cast. And, you know, I thought the guy really executed that offense uh, with the Redskins exceptionally well. They had big numbers, uh, and he was a big part of that. Not really sure what happened and, and, and why the change is now, but, you know, in Minnesota, he's got a good supporting cast as well, and uh, I expect him to have good success. Well, he'll need that supporting cast, too, you know, because I think one thing is clear. It is Super Bowl or bust. I mean, this is a team – that very nearly made it that far last year. So that's really the only way I think they'll define a successful season. And we talked about it with Kirk Cousins when I was just in Eagan, Minnesota, a couple of days ago. And you cannot escape his record in the postseason. I mean, he only has one playoff appearance in his career. He's 3-14 and 14 against teams that eventually made it into the playoff. So that resume really illuminates what he has and hasn't done. And matter of fact, statistically, when you're comparing uh, Case Keenum and Kirk Cousins, uh, Kirk Cousins is actually behind Case Keenum and QBR when it comes to third quarter situations fourth quarter situations versus the blitz versus any type of pressure. So you're really trying to understand why did they make this change. But he also has this fiery personality and this leadership quality that maybe they think will be the dynamic difference also in those situations you hope. But again, at least he has a wide receiver now that has gotten some big money and Adam Thielen, those two have been a big duo uh, last season as well. Well, the Vikings clearly had money to spend. They have given out an NFL high $212 million in guaranteed money since the start of this league year, including Stefan Diggs, who we know was part of one of those dynamic playoff finishes we talked about. Josina, by the way. Oh, Lord. Bring it back. <laughs> Wind it up. <laughs> it's the many miracle. Oh, man. And, you know, Josina, you talked to these players. I know you talked to Diggs in particular about what this felt like. Here he is. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side, caught by Dick. Stay up, oh, my oh my God! Oh my God! Thirty, no way! Touchdown! Oh Are you kidding me? It's a Minneapolis miracle! Wow! I got. Oh my goodness! I still don't know what just happened. I really don't. Yes. All I can say is, give it to God, because. Without him, nothing, nothing is possible, and I wouldn't be here. So, damn, that shit feel good. Oh my gosh! Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, that, you know? And the hair is still intact, baby. Don't get it twisted. Listen, it's so rare that we get such an unfiltered response, and when we do, it's great to see. Nice work out of you. Thank Glad you. to see you made it in one Thank piece. you. <laughs> I'm a squeaky toy, and I've got one job, getting chomped on by this little ankle sniffer. So pardon me for feeling inept compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, while I'm getting slobbered on, Geico is creating cool technology like their mobile app, which lets people pay their bills or file a claim. Plus, Geico is the fastest-growing auto insurer for the last 10 years. Is it too much for me to ask for one more feature? Fast and friendly claim service like Geico, maybe? Oh, great. I'm getting buried again. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. The already infamous words of Dave Gettleman, who put this all in our head now. A first-rounder's got to be at least uh, headed sort of, has to have Hall of Fame potential. But uh, a little bit of a stretch here, but you know, let's look at this list uh, because this is your 2018 first round. And tell me, I'm going to ask each of you the same question. One of these rookies, if you had to, you know, we haven't even played a game yet, but if you had to foresee the future and say this guy has a shot at Canton, whom would it be, Coach? Well, I'm going to go with not a very sexy position in a lot of the fans' minds, but <laughs> I will say this. Offensive guard Quentin Nelson, you know, what oh. I've seen and what I've heard coming out of Indy, uh, both in pass protection and his run blocking, I think he's going to be pretty special and special fast. Well, you know all too well that with these offensive linemen, we often don't hear their names unless something's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> so at least for the sake of argument right now, I'll keep an eye on Quentin Nelson, and I would agree with you the early word has been extremely positive. Josita, if you say who I think you're going to say, you mm -hmm. certainly aren't going out on a limb here. Well, listen, I have to go with the guy who already has his own nickname and say quads. And when your general manager is already anointing you that you have to have a Hall of Fame jacket, you better deliver on that. The only person anointing himself with the Hall of Fame jacket too early is Chad Johnson when he had the Gordon Gartrell version of the yellow jacket sometime in 1980-something we don't remember. But Saquon Barkley has to deliver because when you're talking about an older quarterback right now that needs a run 
rushing game. That was all the excuses last year. Everything that was going on with the offensive line, they are hoping this young talent out of Penn State will come up big for them. Well, look, we never know. So many things can happen, and a career is is, is not a season or even a season or two, but I think most people agree <laughs> he's got the skill set to at least make that plausible. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Uh-huh. So forget the Hall of Fame for just a minute. You know, when you look at these 32 players, who's out there, Coach, again, I'll start with you. Who, who are we not talking enough about at this point? Well, I really like this player coming out and did a lot of work on him. But uh, linebacker Tremaine Edmonds that mm. went to Buffalo, uh, both from an inside linebacker behind the line of scrimmage and as well as outside, bringing that extra dimension, dimension able to rush the passer. So I like his uh, uh, dual abilities, both rushing and playing behind the line of scrimmage. Jojo? So I'm going to get my black Vanna White on, if you don't mind, because i got to go even further to point to my pick. Mine is all the way down here. A survey says wide, re- wide receiver DJ Moore for the Panthers. Uh, coming out of Maryland, he was a 2017 Big Ten Player of the Year, had over 1,000 yards receiving uh, coming out of his junior year. But if you're talking to the people down in Carolina right now, he is their best-kept secret. They've been talking about down there about how he's been flying under the radar. I was talking to his agent yesterday. Of course, he's going to big him up, but he's saying, man, this kid is really going to be special. So I don't know if he's going to quite catch us off guard in the sense that um, Odell Beckham Jr. didn't rise to that level, but you're hearing a lot of talk about him down in Charlotte. Fair enough. Coach, I'm always interested in asking coaches these questions because sometimes, you know, the answers surprise you, but who's the uh, most impressive rookie you ever coached? Ooh, you know, I've been blessed to be in this league for some time now, and you only get to do that with great players. Uh, I go all the way back to really my first draft pick as a head coach, and that's Julius Peppers. Mm. Anytime you can play in this league for 17 years and do the things he's done and travel the globe, really, as far as even teams he's played with and been very successful and a big part of the winning ways of those football teams. I don't, you, you, it doesn't seem like you could go wrong with Julius Peppers as your answer. And I didn't even pay him to say that stand by a target, so I, good I, job, I, Coach. Always <laughs> North Carolina plug. Roquan Smith continues to hold out. The number eight overall pick has missed nearly two weeks of camp at this point. This, of course, because he's failed to agree to terms with the team that drafted him, the Chicago Bears. And at this point, both sides do appear to be holding firm. Here's his head coach today. The biggest thing with, with, with any player, regardless of who you are, is you, you, you lose valuable reps, uh, which is stating the obvious. Um, uh, and then there's teaching that goes on as well. So regardless of who you are, um, that's just the situation that we happen to be in right now. And we understand that. He understands that. It, it is at a stalemate. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm not going to get into really any more where it's at uh, publicly. I don't think it's fair to, to him. I don't think it's fair to his agent. I don't think it's fair to our organization. We're, um, we're going to you know, keep it between us. And, and uh, I think that's the best thing to do right now. At this point, you would likely expect it to stay quiet until there is something to report. And Michelle Steele is at Bears camp with more. Michelle? Hey, Wendy. Yeah, when I asked Matt Nagy if he would describe this contract situation with Roquan Smith as a stalemate, to be honest, I really wasn't sure what he was going to say. I was a little bit surprised that he described it as, yes, a stalemate. That is a word that we have not heard used about this contract situation through 10 practices here in Bourbon A at Bears training camp, and certainly not what fans want to hear about a player who's projected to make an immediate impact on this defense. Now, of course, this concerns language, offset language in his contract that would void guarantees if he's suspended for the NFL. NFL's new helmet rule, and as a guy who's projected to be a middle linebacker, he's very susceptible to being punished over that rule. In fact, defensive coordinator Vic Fangio today admitted it's going to be very hard for these referees to officiate those kinds of plays. I asked Fangio if he's concerned at this point over week one readiness for Roquan Smith in Green Bay when they play the Packers on the road, and he said he kind of sighed and said the great ones adjust will adjust. So not overwhelming concern about Roquan Smith, at least publicly at this point. But as we get into preseason games, uh, one, two, three, and beyond, the concern has got to be growing, but a stalemate at this point, Wendy. Michelle, thank you. And I agree. It's interesting when you hear the admission that, yes, in fact, it is a stalemate. How important to get this done 
and get Roquan Smith in camp in terms of the learning process? Well, I mean, they're starting into week three. I mean, they have a preseason game Thursday night. Um, so all those are valuable. You know, I think uh, Coach Nagy explained it the best, and same with Vic Fangio, uh, his defensive coordinator. You know, at some point, I mean, it's already a problem now. They've, they were one of two teams to start first to go to camp. So it's been a while. It's not like he's missed a day or two. Uh, he's got some catching up to do. I understand he's really uh, a, a good FBI football intelligence guy, and he'll pick up. But, you know, it's, it's he's a signal caller. The rest of that team's got to get used to him be in there as well so it's not just him it's the the rest of that defense I just think that we are in the ridiculous category right now when you talk about being in the third week of this I mean this is your first rounder there's no way that this should be taking this long whether it's offset provision which is still a insurance provision in case something it's not even guaranteed that you even you know trigger that and then on top of that for any guarantee to be voided in the event that he does something like a helmet to helmet hit which when we're talking about bang bang plays that may or may not be his fault and you're trying to read something in real time speed absolutely ridiculous the Chicago Bears need to get this settled right now. Get this done. Time is ticking. Well, we've got your camp pass today. NFL Live continues with our reporters across the country. We'll start with South Palantonia in Philly. Wendy, we are still monitoring the day-to-day practice of Carson Wentz. Now, almost eight months into rehabbing his left knee. He looks fine. He's moving fine. But... Today was the second straight practice. He did not participate in 11-on-11 drills. Why? The team was in full pads today. And Doug Peterson wanted to keep him away from any possible contact, any possible hit, any possible setback. Now here's Todd Archer with the Cowboys. Thanks. As the Cowboys get back to work following their first day off from camp, they will look to continue to ways to improve a passing game that won't have Jason Witten or Des Bryant. We know about their wide receiver by committee approach, but Ezekiel Elliott bears watching in the passing game too. In Elliott's first two seasons, the Cowboys were mindful of his snaps. Elliott has 58 catches in the first 25 games of his career. Two of his three touchdown catches have gone for more than 70 yards on screen plays. So far in camp, Elliott has been a useful option for Dak Prescott out of the backfield. Running backs coach Gary Brown said Elliott has similar skills to Le'Veon Bell in Pittsburgh that the Cowboys will want to take advantage of. He has to make major problems for the defense, Brown said. We believe he can do that. Now with more on the Jaguars, let's go to Mike DiRocco. Thanks, Todd. All-pro cornerback Jalen Ramsey reported to training camp today. Came in about 10.45 this morning. The Jaguars are hopeful they can get him on the practice field this afternoon for their late afternoon practice. Of course, he has to pass a physical before he can get on the field. Ramsey had remained back in Nashville after the birth of his daughter last week. He missed the team's first four practices, including the last two in pads. And now for more on the Vikings, here's Courtney Cronin. Thanks, Michael. Big news and a bag secured for Vikings wide receiver Stephon Diggs, who agreed to terms of a five-year extension worth a total of $81 million, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. At just 24 years old, Diggs has barely scratched the surface of how good he can be. Moments seen in the Minneapolis Miracle and his ability to lead the NFL in contested catch rate last season. More importantly, the Vikings secured another piece of their offensive core for the next three seasons. In addition to Diggs, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Pat Elfline and Riley Reef are under contract through the 2020 season. Wendy? Courtney, thank you. We'll go inside the headlines. Our first one coming from NBC Bay Area. No wins yet in sight for Khalil Mack's holdout. JoJo, what's the latest there? Well, it's interesting because it seems like Coach uh, John Gruden is sending out mixed messages. On one hand, he's telling the fans we vow to get him back in camp. On the other, he's saying that this defense really wasn't that good with him there last year or with him there. So right now here in Khalil Mack has been training in Buffalo. We'll really see how about about it he is when it comes to the money portion because although he's incurring a $30,000 fine for each day that he misses in training camp, it bumps up to 800000 plus because he's a fifth-year player for every preseason game that he missed. So that is a big jump financially. We'll see how serious he is then. That's not nothing. Coach, at what point do you get concerned? Well, I'm concerned now. You know, I think he's going to be learning a new defense. Uh, Paul Gunther comes over from Cincinnati, installing a new defense. It's very very complex. Uh, They do a lot of multiple things. Um, And Khalil's going to have to know pass coverage. And getting this close to the season, it's going to be imperative that he gets to camp soon. All right, our next headline coming from Alabama.com. It reads, Calvin Ridley on Julio Jones. He coaches me on everything, even if I do it right. 
What are the Falcons' plans, Josina, for Calvin Ridley? Well, first of all, this is just a great resource for Calvin Ridley to be able to talk to one of the top two, top three wide receivers in the National Football League and be able to do that. Now, obviously, they want to add, you know, some uh, youth to that position because, uh, you know, Julio eventually, you know, will not be there. So they're starting to, you know, bring in this guy. That's why they brought him in with their first round pick out of Alabama. So they want to get him to learn, you know, all the positions and everything that they want to do, including him on that scheme. But Julio, obviously, is still your ace at that position right now. Having said that, though, Coach, What's the, what's the benefit of having a compliment to Julio? Well, I mean, you can – with one guy, I think everybody talked about the offensive coordinator change a year ago. Part of the problem was not having that compliment guy. And people doubled Julio, all right? You've got to have a guy on the other side that can win one-on-one matchups to prevent people from trying to take Julio away or make them play split safety defense and cover both wide receivers, and now that opens your run game. Matt Ryan is secure. He signed a long-term deal. We knew that was a more a matter of when than if, and now they've got pieces in place. What are the expectations for this offense? Because on paper, they look prolific. Yeah, they're good. We played them the opener in the last year, and uh, you know they've got good players along along the whole offense. Um, they can run the ball as well as pass the ball. They're real efficient on third down. Uh, so you know, I look at them as a real Super Bowl contender. Well, in a second year under a new offensive coordinator, and and you know we've talked about the learning curve. That first year, no matter where you are, who you are, it just takes a minute to get on the same page. Yeah, because people even forget the first year when Kyle Shanahan was there. It took some time. That was when Roddy yeah. White was there with Julio Jones, Matt Ryan. It was a little bit of discomfort there initially. And then they started to get in their groove. Of course, Kyle Shanahan is much a genius when it comes to, you know, calling plays. But at least this second season under Sarkeesian, they have a little bit more familiarity. You hope that they have uh, oiled the gear, so to speak, and they can flow a little bit better throughout the season. Well, it is time for It Must Be Training Camp. You never know what you're going to see this time oh, of Lord. year. How about this? Uh-huh. A Chandler Jones. Okay. Hard hitting, right? But now oh. Steve <laughs> tackling dummy. Look, you didn't cut, your, I mean, cut your toenails there so you don't trip over things. That's uh, no bats <laughs> for Chandler Jones, apparently. Oh, now, I, I joked, I live in New England. I know a ton of Brady's. You know, kids named Brady? Because mm-hmm. yeah, you can figure this one out. Yes. Why? Yes. That is. How about this? This is the Broncos Von Miller meeting a young Von. Aww. Uh, his namesake. Parents named him after the Super Bowl Aww. MVP. Hey, listen, you better line him up and put him in the back. Yeah. Oh, Vaughn and Vaughn. Vaughn will be there all day. There's another one of those good rookies, pal. I tell you, Vaughn Miller was pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. Well, Put his hand in the dirt. Rappers, I would yeah. agree yeah. with that. Uh, Seahawks rookie Shaquem Griffin. Mm-hmm. Obviously playing with his brother Shaquille as well. Yes. Uh, oh. Wow. Looking off Russell Wilson. Yeah. Hey, listen. We shouldn't even be surprised. It's something that he was doing in Central Florida, coming in here, showing them exactly why they drafted him. Well, it's so true. At some point, we will stop feigning surprise because this, right. this should be the expectation. Exactly. And not at all the exception. A jet safety, Jamal Adams. How about this? He is making this kid's day. A signed jersey gives him his gloves, and I'm pretty sure that is excitement personified. Oh, man, that's so awesome. Our players do so many great things. Uh, I wish we could see more of this. They do a lot of great things. Coach, you know, you, you've you obviously been a part of a lot of training camps. I want to talk about that in just a minute. But uh, huh. this just in on, on Johnny Manziel. He was traded to the Montreal Alouettes playing in the CFL. And his head coach, who drafted him, uh, I shouldn't say drafted him, recruited him in college, uh, says he will start Friday night against Hamilton, which is his former team. But I wanted to ask you about training camp because these days get long. You know, I mean, you're obviously trying to get a lot of work done, get a lot of things installed. How do you keep it light? Like, how do you make it? Okay. Well, I think when it, when you can tell they're really tired and you know it's kind of dog days, you can tell their dobbers getting down. I mean, we used to take them, pull buses out front, and now all of a sudden it's a surprise movie, or or taking bowling, or uh, whatever it was. We'd, we'd have watermelon day, or you know, some kind of a a break. And they need that. And they really respond well. And you do need that in the course of a long training camp. Can I tell you this? I was talking to Sheldon Richardson a couple of nights ago, and he was saying how uh, Brian Robeson, the veteran there, keeps it light in the locker room. So apparently, you know, he's a Texas guy, so he plays this underground rapper named Zero. Yeah. So give it up for Brian Robeson for playing <laughs> even an underground rapper. Even yeah. I don't know. That's how they're uh, keeping it light in Minnesota. <laughs> Listen, and you know most of them, so that's saying yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Training yes. camp continues, as we mentioned when we started, all 32 32- teams now in camp so from here on out the season has begun we'll have a whole lot to say and we will do it again tomorrow we hope you'll join us for coach john fox and josina anderson i'm wendy nix see you soon
Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.